Hey guys, my name is Miguel Severo. I am the creator of the Voxel Farm engine. Uh, in the past, a few of you have uh, suggested that I should be doing recordings uh, for videos I have been posting from the engine. So we will try this one time. Uh, you guys can tell me if it worked or not. Hopefully you can get past my thick Spanish accent. So today I want to show you a few new things I have added to the engine over the past uh, few weeks. The first thing you will notice is there is actual plants and little stuff happening under the trees. This is done using a new system for instancing. The way it works is you can have a lot of different meshes being created on top of the, the geometry that is generated from the, the procedural engine. And as you can see, this is a fully volumetric stuff. This is like full 3D meshes. You, you need to keep the polygon counts uh, low. As long as you do that, you could do pretty much anything you want there. So you're looking at the undergrowth here, but could be anything else. Something else that, that was improved recently was the, the LOD transition. So you see I have been walking for a while now and the LOD transitions are not as uh, severe as they used to be. It's, it's, so they are a lot, a lot more subtle right now. Something else I want to show is that now the engine has some form of, of ambient uh, occlusion. Uh, the past I, I had something like uh, an ambient light and this is still active but uh, I was operating more in the, in the low frequencies. I still needed something for the high frequency, the little corners you get everywhere. So here you can see the corners are actually a bit obscure, and this is because of the new ambient occlusion system kicking into, into action. So you see if I create little details into the, into the geometry, you can see they become a little bit uh, darker. And this actually works uh, not only in the in areas that are exposed to sunlight. It's uh, entirely a shallow area, and you see again the corners are a bit dark. I can get less light whenever the, the geometry is actually precluded. You see, I will make a little indentation in the terrain. As you can see, it becomes a bit uh, darker. I will try to change the shader so it will display the the occlusion information. You see what you get here is actually it's being computed in the in the CPU once it's computed it's cached and it's used and what you see here is is the raw form so once this is rendered it's softened it has some noise add, uh, to it so its uh, contribution is a lot uh, softer than what you see right here on screen but as I said before there is also an ambient component going in so I will try to enable this in the shader for a moment so you can see how that different kind of light looks like. Okay, there you can see it. And this is just the light that is coming from the sky. And it's, it's fairly average around the, the scene. So this is the low frequencies. Once you add up the, the new occlusion components, which is higher frequency, you get uh, you get a nice uh, distribution over all the frequencies. You get the little stuff being occluded. You also get the large features uh, occluding the ambient light as well. And here we are back to the default rendering. Now I realized there is something else I forgot to mention when I was covering the, the new instancing system. Let me see if I can find a place that is hit by direct sunlight. And this is about the, the lights too. So the the new instances they they collect light, but they also contribute to the shadows uh, for both the direct sunlight and the, the ambient light. So here you can see there's a little bit of shadow on the those uh, plants. If I zoom out, it's, it's a bit easier to, to see. So let's put back the camera to the eye level. There is another feature I want to, to show, and this is a feature that is actually everywhere. But some of the really good features you, you add, those are really difficult to see. They change the way everything looks. 
So this one in particular is everywhere you look at, but it's easier to see from the distance. Here I'm trying to find uh, a spot that is uh, distant enough for, for this to, to show. I'm trying to get a, a good look of a mountain or something that is in the distance. Those hills are, well, they're not so easy to see. I, I will have to move to a, to a different spot. The idea behind this feature is what it does, it, it colorizes the geometry output of the procedural engine. Most of the look you, you saw so far, it came from textures. Now there is another layer of content going on. And you can see it here in this distant uh, hill. You see that there are different colors along the height of the hill. And this is coming not from the textures, this is coming from another procedural layer. I will switch to a different scene so you can see this uh, better. So you see this side of the mountain, it's entirely colorized using uh, this technique. So it's not getting its color from the texture. It ha there, there's a lower frequency coloring happening here. It does create a lot of variety in what you see. There is another feature, this is the last thing I will show, and it's, uh, it's something I'm really happy about. I, I took some time, I rewrote the entire terrain functions. They're the ones that produce the, all the, the, the rocks, the caves. I was not happy with the way it was done before because it was mostly based on height. That was some kind of a waste. The engine is fully voxel, which means you can have a terrain that it's, it's going in any direction. The only reason why I had the terrain based on a high map was it's a lot faster to compute. How fast you can evaluate this uh, field function that determines the surface of the terrain is really what makes this possible uh, in real time. What I managed to do with this uh, rewrite of the, the terrain engine is that now I can have volume going any direction out of the, ter the terrain. It's quite nice because you, you have all, all these uh, interesting rock formations this is something you could have as many as you want because they are based on, on samples. You could even draw some interesting rocks by hand. And you could incorporate them into into the engine. So here you can see a few different examples how they blend together. And as you can see, they really stick out. And those are fully voxel. You could go and dig tunnels and do everything you want. They are quite large. So there are a few trees right there. And you can see the, the scale of uh, those uh, features. So the reason I'm, I'm happy about them is that I managed to, to make this new system run in the same amount of time the old system was taken to run. So there, there is a little hit in performance, but it's still manageable and it can look a lot better. So that's all for now. If you have any comments, please go to the blog and post them. You will find the URL in the video's description.